Good evening and welcome to the Eden Prairie Planning Commission meeting on August 25th, 2014. Please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Well, the first item on our agenda is, in fact, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or comments to the agenda tonight? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Next on the agenda is approval of the meeting minutes from the August 11th, 2014 meeting. Are there any comments, additions, corrections to the minutes? Not seeing any money, any changes? I am open to a motion. Move to approve the minutes from the August 11th, 2014 meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Two abstentions. Okay, so now it's time for our public hearings. The first item on the public hearing agenda is a variance number 2014-04. The request for the location is 10611 and 10612 Calvano Ridge. The request is to permit an 11-foot wall and fence along Riverview Road across from Calvano Ridge. City code maximum height is six feet. Also to permit one additional area identification sign. City code maximum is one area identification wall sign per development per street entrance. Could the proponent please come forward and give us a Background on your request. Hello, uh, thank you, commissioners. My name is Michael Gresser. I live at 10660 Caballo Ridge. Uh, my address was formerly 1070 Riverview Road in Eden Prairie. And uh, we had bought the old farmstead uh, that was uh, one of the last undeveloped parcels along the river frontage in Eden Prairie back in 2005 always with the intent to do uh, develop it at some point. And uh, I still live there, uh, so my home is in the same spot, just a new address as we built Caballo Ridge. And in uh, part of our process from the development is uh, to have a, uh, we, we went through the, the development process with staff and, uh, and we have, uh, since the city has vacated the road, so Caballo Ridge is a private road and uh, in, questioning and talking to homeowners and some market research that we did. Uh, our neighborhood is, is upper bracket homes and uh, one of the uh, chief uh, plus points for selling at, at the level was the uh, uh, ability to have a gated community. So uh, we applied for a building permit and that's when we actually found out that there was a variance process to go above the six feet and initially uh, we had our landscape uh, architect design the gate at, at Cavallo Ridge and the entrance monument, and it was 16 feet tall at its tallest. I believe you've had plans that have come through, and I, I could put a perspective plan up on the screen if you would prefer. Otherwise, if you're fine with going with your packets, I can just do that. It actually do that. would be a good idea if you could put okay. one up on the screen so everyone sure. could see it. There's a camera up above, and if you just put it under the camera, they can hear. You can look up on the, uh, there you go. That's centered, and we can zoom in from above. Very good. So if you're familiar with the spot, this is Riverview Road, uh, which is the uh, furthest south exit off 169. We're about half a mile to the west of uh, Riverview Road and 169 exit. This is a perspective drawing 
to show. And the, and the trademark, I went through many development uh, uh, drawings and concepts for the development. And when it came down to it, we thought that the best approach was to maintain the original character of the development. And it was uh, actually a horse farm. And uh, for many years, we had horses out in front, right along that white split rail fence. And uh, the frontage on the property is about 600 feet along Riverview Road, the entire development. Of the 600 feet, that's always been lined with that white split rail fence that you see in the drawing. It's a four split rail fence, about four feet tall. Uh, that entire split rail fence, it, portions of it have been removed to allow development access, but the entire split rail fence is gonna stay other than about the 30 feet on either side of the main entrance. And our theme, and prior to starting the development, it was a long driveway in at the exact location of Cavallo Ro uh, Ridge Road that we've constructed, and that always had a limestone gate at it. And uh, so we removed that to accommodate the building of the road and actually widened the road out at the entrance. And uh, you can see from this perspective that the gate actually juts back. It meets the four foot tall split rail fence on both the east and west sides. And then uh, after having a, a column that's about six feet tall uh, right at the edge, it goes along at about uh, four feet in height until it gradually comes up to about eight feet in height. And then it hits a, a small wing column that's about eight and a half feet tall and, or excuse me, nine and a half feet tall, and then the columns on either side of the road, which are now at 11 feet tall. So the majority of the monument stays at a, approximately four feet in height and then uh, increases in height uh, at the gates. The gates themselves are designed to be eight feet tall. We had originally designed this when we got the design from the landscape architect at 16 feet tall on either side. And we as a developer development team probably didn't do a good enough job of communicating to neighbors and when the variance letter came out it stated something to the effect of developers seeking a variance to do a 16-foot wall along riverview road and uh, i had met with several of my neighbor friends who said you know what you're going to do a 16-foot stone wall and i said no it was just some columns excuse me that were going to be that tall and the rest of it was going to sweep down uh, after having some letters written and some concerns expressed, we talked with staff who urged us to have a series of neighborhood meetings, which we had three and invited people along. And for part of those meetings that took place on site, I had constructed wooden uh, pieces of uh, timber and, and lumber put together to show the layout of the gate and the height of the gate. And I think it became obvious when we met with the neighbors that the 16 foot tall gate was going to be quite tall. And through those series of neighborhood meetings, people said, you know, if it was about two thirds of the height, uh, I think that that would be better. And when people saw also the original drawing showed it just in frontal view. If you show it in perspective and show that it actually goes back uh, 49 feet from the curb line from Riverview Road, it's much further back. Um, also, as the roadway came up there, I, I agreed with the, the take that 16 feet was probably too much. So we had the gate redesigned and re resubmitted at the dimensions I described with a maximum of the two columns on either side of 11 feet. Most of the rest of the gate averaging about six feet to seven feet in height. And then the remainder of the 600 feet being in the uh, split rail fence. And over the last days, um, we've gotten about 20 letters of support that I believe are in your packet. Uh, several neighbors who had expressed uh, opposition to it have, have now rewritten letters uh, appreciating that we've changed the design. And uh, I've got several neighbors who are around who attended tonight to express their support. And uh, I would very much appreciate your support uh, of our variants. Are there any questions I can answer? I think we'll hold the questions. We'll uh, get city staff's read on, on it and then come back to you with any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Julie, do you want to lead us through the staff report? Sure, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, as stated, the variance request is a two-part variance. The first variance request is with regard to the height of the portions of the wall or fence that will be are proposed to be constructed along Cavallo Ridge. The second variance request is to allow additional ident area identification sign, as you 
stated earlier, code only allows one per development. In this case, they are asking for two. Staff is supporting both of the variances. The uh, findings before you this evening do support the variances due to the, their ability to meet the three-part test and staff is rec recommending approval subject to the plans that are included in your report. Thank you. Any quick questions from the commission before we go to the public hearing? If not, if there's anybody in the audience who would like to speak at this point in time uh, regarding this variance, please feel free to come forward and we'll be happy to listen to your comments. See nobody are again last chance any questions uh, from the commission for staff Julie, Julie you have something more mr. chair members of the commission I forgot to mention the applicant did discuss the fact that there are several uh, letters of support that were provided on goldenrod on the table for you this evening in addition there were four letters of support that were hand delivered to staff just as the meeting began so i apologize we don't have copies for you but i wanted to note them in so that they can be included in the public record thank you i think there's one interesting thing we had in our um, packet and that was a drawing of the elevation that showed that um, Seventy-seven percent of the square footage of the wall is below the six-foot limit. Um, Ninety-seven percent of the wall is below eight feet, and only three percent of the wall is above eight feet, at, with a maximum height of eleven feet. So, if there are no more questions. Um, nobody else in the audience who wants to speak then i will entertain a motion mr chair i'll move uh, to close the public hearing second I have a motion and a second all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed motion passed i'll make a second motion to rec move to recommend approval of the final order 2014-4 Second. second again we have a motion and a second for approval of the variance all in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed motion passed good luck with your project Thank you. our second public hearing tonight is lion's tap restaurant the location is 16180 Flying Cloud Road. The request is for a comprehensive guide plan change from rural residential to neighborhood commercial on 0 0.94 acres and a comprehensive sewer plan amendment to extend municipal services to serve the Lion's Tap restaurant. Could the proponent of this project please come forward and give us an overview of your your request. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, my name is John Shardlow. I'm a planning consultant with Stantec Consulting. Um, with me this evening is Bert Noderman, the owner of the Lion's Tap. He's here if there are any questions that he can answer. Uh, this is exactly the same application that came before this commission and got the recommendation for approval previously. The only difference between this application and the previous one is that this one doesn't include an expansion of the Musa line. Um, so the, the application that we bought, brought before you before, uh, I have all the presentation materials. I could give it to you again, but the fact of the matter is it's exactly the same as it was then. It's just a little bit simpler. Uh, again, the, the city council approved it unanimously. I'm happy to give you a presentation, but we'd prefer to just answer questions. That would be fine. Thank you. We'll come back to you with questions. Julie, your turn. Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Uh, consistent with what Mr. Shardlow just shared with you, this, ap this similar application was reviewed by the city last fall. The city council did uh, approve the request contingent upon Metropolitan Council approval. Once the application was submitted to the Metropolitan Council, they suggested another alternative, which is um, what has brought forward the request that is before you today. So the applicant has withdrawn their previous request, and we are now dealing with this application. Staff is recommending approval subject to the conditions outlined in your report. 
Very good. Are there any first-line questions from the commission right now for staff? If not, seeing that this is a public hearing, if there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this issue, we'd be happy to listen to your comments. Not seeing anyone. Again, second chance for questions. Okay, then I would, I'm here to entertain a motion. Move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good luck with the project. So, move quickly through, through those two. Let's go to the third public hearing. And that is project for MACP, Request for Plan Unit Development Concept Review on 5.04 acres, plan unit development district review on 5.04 acres, zoning district amendment within the office zoning district on 5.4 acres, site plan review on 5.4 acres, preliminary plat of 5.04 acres into one lot. The location is 6889 Roland Road. Would the project proponent please come forward and give us an overview of your proposal. Good evening, uh, and thank you for allowing us to present tonight. I'm Sean Kinnery, the manager of office and facilities for the Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies, which includes three grant-making entities founded by the late Margaret A. Cargill. We are the largest private philanthropy in the state of Minnesota and one of the five largest nationally. Our mission is to provide meaningful assistance and support to society, the arts, and the environment. We take our commitment to the environment very seriously in how we work and manage our resources, in our facilities, and in our grant making. And toward that commitment, much of our building expansion planning has focused on protecting the adjacent watershed and maximizing sustainable use of resources, such as water and energy. The remodel of our current facility allowed our organization to restore the native prairie landscape and receive LEED Gold status, the highest achievement for an existing building. The goal for our building expansion is LEED Platinum. Margaret grew up here in the Twin Cities, so we have a natural affinity for this location and are committed to remaining in Eden Prairie and at our present address. The, the City of Eden Prairie and Nine Mile Creek Watershed District have been excellent partners and our strong working relationship with them was a major factor in our decision to stay in Eden Prairie. During our initial remodel, both were extremely helpful making sure we understood how to navigate state and local building codes. And as we begun our ex expansion planning, our experience with both has continued to be excellent. That has reinforced our commitment to stay in Eden Prairie. I'm joined this evening by Betsy Voss and Jeff Walls with Gensler, our de design partners. Chris Nelson and Pat Keenan, our engineering partners. And Liz Borer, who is part of the Mac Philanthropies legal team. I'm sure Betsy and her team can answer any questions you might have. Thanks so much. Good evening, thank you so much. Julie, I have a technical question. Can this forward slides? Again, if you would introduce yourself please. and spell your last name, please. Sure. Betsy Voss, representing Gensler and the Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies. Um, my last name is V as in Victor, O-H-S. My first name is Betsy, B-E-T-S-Y, and then Gensler is G-E-N-S-L-E-R. 
Jeff Waltz, WALZ, the Senior Project Architect for Gensler in Minneapolis. Chris Nelson with KFI Engineers. Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N. Thanks so much. Sure, thank you. So we have a slide deck that we'd love to have Julie help us put on, on the screen for you. We wanted to take this time to cover the design intent of the project, explain to you the current context, and then the expansion plans that the Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies has, and then answer any questions that you have. We have spent, um, I think, the better part of two years working with Julie and her team, Kevin Bogolke at the Nine Mile Creek, to really develop a plan. Thank you. Will this work then? I think or you'll do it? Yeah. Okay. Can you flick to the next slide? A plan that will really support the Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies for years to come. We, um, this design team worked on the original renovation of that site at 688 Roland Road in 2010. So as Sean said, that site was a lead gold project, re really restored the natural habitat, created um, a photovoltaic panel roof on the, the roof of the building that was currently there, and really reinvested into the landscape, creating natural plants and really creating a stormwater system that was pretty innovative at the time, working with the Nine Mile Creek. So when the Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies wanted to expand, that expansion became um, a no-brainer to stay here in Eden Prairie and, and really capitalize on the investment that they'd already made. The slide in front of you talks about our design approach. Big picture, the design really represents the philosophy and the values of Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies. So thinking about a singular building, taking the existing building, expanding upon it, making it feel like one building as it was designed to be one. So as you can see when we go through the design, the building addition really matches the quality, the character, the finishes, and the detailing of the current building, so they seem as if they've always been there together. What we didn't want was something disconnected. Quality and integrity. <clears throat> Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies plans to be in this building for a very long time. So investing in the right materials, making sure it's a quality construction, using brick, limestone, bronze, um, metal, using things that are gonna last a long time, investing in the landscape, um, permeable pavers, and systems that create a long-lasting environmental solution for that site as well, to really enhance the watershed um, and the, the sort of wetland setback that happens along their site. They have bought the Nine Mile Creek Watershed District setback at the wetland. Environmental stewardship, Sean talked about this. This project is taking environmental stewardship to the next level. We're proposing a LEED Platinum Plus project, so working to develop 15% of the on-site renewable energy on-site through geothermal and through photovoltaics, which we can show you. And then thinking about a high-performance building, making sure that the new systems, which Chris can talk about, are really performing at their highest level to give the best value to the Margaret Cargo Philanthropies. And then having a world-class experience, having a space that's welcoming and designed well, that connects to the community and creates a great front door for the community to, to be connected to the Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies. Next slide. This is the view from Roland Road. So if you can go back actually one more slide, Julie, thank you. So, sorry, to the site plan, I apologize. Sorry, two back. Other way. Wrong way. Thank you. So the current building ends right here. And these two masses become, they're fully connected, become the expansion. So right now, the curb cut to the project is here. There's surface parking and then uh, one level below grade parking now in the building. Um, the expansion is a similar height, two stories above grade. Um, surface parking would happen right in a similar fashion as it does right now off Roland Road in a parking lot that's made of permeable pavers and then staff parking for the expansion would actually come off Old Shady Oak Road here and enter in on the west side and all be connected with one level below grade parking. So that's the site plan in and of itself. This is the wetland here and then this is the plantings and the permeable uh, surfaces. There's gonna be expanded dining terrace here. In the original project in 2010, um, there was an expanded terrace on the north side that will remain. Um, there'll be an additional terrace on the east side here along with, um, there's currently an orchard. <clears throat> so food production is gonna be expanded. There'll be more plantings on the deck and then on the roof um, garden, which we can show you in a later slide. And again, just more area to really experience the landscape that's there um, and really maximize the site itself. So really making sure that the design of the building is capturing all the great views of this wetland area. Next slide. So this is the view as you'd arrive into Roland Road, into the guest parking area. You'd have an entry here with um, heavy timber columns, um, bronze detailing, again, a limestone uh, facade here, 
along with a brick facade here, matching the uh, mansard roof that's already there, the same exact height, the same material, bringing that across. Um, an additional penthouse at the top because there's gonna be a green roof and we want an accessible uh, entry to that green roof there. Next slide. This is an aerial view of the site. So as you enter off Rowan Road, you're looking at the building here. Currently, the existing building, which ends here, has 60% of its roof covered in photovoltaics. Uh, the Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies is expanding that and creating an extension at the back end of their current roof and then on all additional roof surfaces and one site structure, which we can show you. That expanded photovoltaic production will provide 15% of their energy as well as you can see here, um, two skylights that will bring daylight into the space and then a green roof terrace here that will have both vegetables for food production and um, plants and, and native plants and landscape, an area for education, as well as um, a solar, th solar thermal array, which is actually a solar system that heats domestic hot water. Next slide. This is an aerial view of the back of the property, so this is really looking at the west side. So you're seeing the drive entry here on the west. Right here is a site structure that will have photovoltaic panels on it as well. And this is set up as a community drop site for a community supported agricultural program or a CSA that both the MAC Philanthropies would support as well as other people in the community. Those photovoltaic panels will be seen by the community. Again, a gesture that kind of connects the community to the fact that there's energy production happening. Those would be the only photovoltaic panels that are visible to the community because the mansard roof hides the rest of that from, from site. Um, there's a series of trails, um, different materials uh, connected all throughout the site to again encourage walking, wellness. The tra trails add up to I think a third of a mile or a half of a mile one third of a mile if you walk them all. Again, trying to make a good use of this larger landscape. And you can see here that I expanded dining terrace with the site structure. So this gives you a good sense of the building size, character, quality, massing. Next slide. This is an intimate view of the dining terrace. Um, the Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies provides a lot of amenities to their staff, so currently they do have a terrace. With their growing staff, they'd like to expand that, so there's some built-in seating. Um, they could be performances for their staff, concerts, lectures, um, those sorts of things. And uh, a little food service component there, like a barbecue grill and a little bit of a, a bar area. Next slide. This is a close-up view of the roof deck. So the penthouse that you saw in that perspective off Roland Road, You'd enter here off of the elevator and the stair, you'd come up and there's a sort of a boardwalk terrace piece here that's raised up on the roof. There's a little bit of space just to have a few people up there. This isn't a gathering spot, it's just a moment of education. And these, these planters here would be raised and they'd be for food production and then this would be um, an intensive green roof with native plants and other flowers. You're seeing here a skylight that actually connects to the reception space and then its relationship to the mansard roof and then the roof, uh, the dining terrace below. Now, Chris is gonna talk about the geothermal design for the project. Thanks, Betsy. Um, this is a, a technical drawing uh, just showing the vertical well field. So we're using a geothermal uh, heat pump system to heat and cool the space. Um, with that system, we're um, Averaging about 50% energy savings relative to a lead uh, baseline, ASHRAE 90.1, 2010. Um, there's 144 vertical bores that are 220 feet deep. It's a closed loop system that we circulate a food grade propylene glycol and we exchange energy um, in the summertime and the wintertime to heat and cool in the space. Next slide. This is a, a section view that just kind of shows, again, their uh, vertical boreholes uh, with one inch U-tubes, uh, and they uh, run through in the wetland, and they run uh, 200, approximately 220 feet deep down. Just to give you, a, and this shows the different layers of, of the soil testing that we had taken. Next slide. That's, that's, that's it? Okay. 
Do we have any questions? Well, thank you so much. Um, we'll ask city staff to, to uh, run us through their report. If we have any more questions, we'll get back to you. Thanks, thanks so much. Julie, running back. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, the request before you this evening is a PUD request, as is quite common with those. There are requests for several waivers. The first waiver request is with regard to building height in order to accommodate the penthouse for the stair and elevator access to the green roof that Betsy had discussed in her presentation and you saw in several of the renderings that were visible on the screen. The second request uh, for waiver is with regard to the parking requirements on site. City code would require for a building this size in this for this type of use, approximately 420 on-site parking stalls. The applicant is proposing to provide 170 parking stalls, as was noted in the uh, overview that was provided to you by Betsy and her team. Staff is recommending approval of the PUD, including approval of the waivers, um, subject to the information that is included within your staff report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Commissioners, any first level questions? I have one question. Okay. Um, the um, penthouse, um, uh, I'm curious as to know um, the square footage of that and its relationship to the rest of the building. If you have that, please. Your question is square footage in relationship to the rest of the building. The square footage of the penthouse itself and then the relation of that penthouse to the rest of the building if you have like an approximate percentage mm -hmm. that of which it, you're asking for this it's uh, a um, sure it's um, going off of memory it's about 18 feet by about 22 feet it's just enough to accept the stairwell um, a normal sized elevator and then a modest lobby then there's a small compartment at the back you'll see at the plan that's meant for storing some minor tools and gardening supplies. I think it's approximately 600 square feet. Okay, great. Thank you. We can, thank you very much. Any other questions for Julie or the proponent? If not, I'm sorry, go ahead. Question, uh, for Julie, how often do we uh, approve variances to the parking requirements? Mr. Chair, Except members of the commission, um, it's not uncommon for the city to receive, review, and approve variance requests for parking um, requirements. In this particular case, as is the case in all requests, the initial thing that staff is looking for is if this user were to vacate the property, would there be parking available for whoever the next user intends to be? This site, if it's developed in conformance with the plans before you this evening, has many, many unique characteristics. So it would not be an office building that would be marketed to a general office user. It's going to have a very specific user looking to relocate to this building. Given that level of detail and level of specificity within the compound overall, if you will, staff is comfortable with the amount of parking that is provided if another user were to come in that uh, needed additional parking, certainly we could revisit it at that point, but the provision of 170 stalls at this point uh, meets staff's approval at this point. Thank you. Again, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to this issue? If so, please step forward and give us your name and address, and we would be happy to listen to your comments. I have a few people here on a sign-up form. I'm assuming you signed up saying that you were here and not saying that you wanted to speak in front of the group. Okay. Seeing no public comments coming forward. Second round. I would move to, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give one more, one more chance. One more chance for questions. Not for me. It's so one question. If it's built, um, it's quite impressive. Will you be bringing school children to see all these different things? I think that'd be great education for a lot of kids. I 
can answer on behalf of Margaret A. Cargo Philanthropies. Um, Education is a, a big component of this project, so there will be a lot of information both in the building and on the site that starts to communicate the lessons and the leadership of sustainability and, and art and quality of the building. So there will be opportunities to share that with the community. That's part of the intention of the development is to really be innovative and to really lead with this development so then we can, that the MAC philanthropies can be leading in education, not just to children, but to really anybody who's interested in learning about sustainability or art. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I have one question, and it's not directly about the design as much as it is to know, because I don't, whether other geothermal designs of this type have already been implemented elsewhere, either in Minnesota or other locations, and what that has helped you understand as you develop this design. Sure. Uh, geothermal energy has been used for decades, um, so it's used widely across uh, Minnesota and the, and the whole country and even uh, across the, in the world. Um, so anything peculiar here is we have located it in the wetland, and that's been approved through Nine Mile Creek. Uh, we've gone through. In the process in the of being process. approved. So. But we've done a lot of due diligence with the Nine Mile Creek um, Technical Evaluation Panel to make sure that they're comfortable, that they understand the intent, and they actually are using it as a learning process too. So they'd actually be partnering with the MAC Philanthropies to monitor it, to see it, and potentially be able to be replicated in other waterways, again, as a leadership moment for the project. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, any other questions? Thank you. Maybe less, let me ask a question of staff. Rod, um, any comments from the engineering perspective on the, uh, the geothermal system? I, don't, at least to my knowledge, we don't have anything like that in Eden Prairie right now. And any engineering comments? Um, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the commission, the, the geothermal aspect of that would be uh, dealt with more through our building department. Um, we had discussions at DRC about it, but uh, it's really, uh, needs to be an enclosed system and, and that's what they're proposing. And, uh, but as far as uh, public works, we don't deal with that. Okay. All right. If there are no last questions, no last chance for anybody to make a comment, I will. Um, I guess I'll, I'll make a comment. Um, I find this to be a very innovative uh, proposal. Uh, a lot of positives. Uh, we on the Planning Commission, uh, along with city staff, have been strong proponents of uh, the environmental sensitivity and sustainability, uh, have done some uh, homework, I think, on, on uh, LEED uh, certification. LEED Platinum certainly is a very um, uh, aggressive plan, and, and we salute you. Uh, it would be a great thing to see in Eden Prairie. So just a comment from my side. With that, I will entertain motion. Now I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Move to recommend approval of the planned unit development concept review on 5.04 acres, planned unit development district review on 5.04 acres, zoning district amendment within the office zoning district on 5.04 acres, Site plan review on 5.04 acres and preliminary plat of 5.04 acres into one lot. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Looks like a very exciting project. We're happy to have you in Eden Prairie. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, that's the end of our public hearings tonight. Is uh, Julie, do we have a planner's report? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, I do have a planner's report item to let you know that the September 8th planning commission meeting has been canceled. Okay. 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 Uh, any members' reports? Continuing business? New business? If none, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.